What's going on in the golfing community today? I'm actually going to do a video that is actually a requested one done by somebody when I was playing my TGC tours. So if you are new to the channel, you definitely want to make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. And if you are always a subscriber, make sure you're filling up those comments of any videos that you guys like to do. More than happy to make a video. But the question that was brought to my attention, I've dramatically have been increasing my game. Uh, this update has kind of stalled my progression a little bit, but I originally started in the CCF division where I've won on the CC division for the TGCs and I've worked my way up all the way to the B where I continuously have been posting top 25s, including two top 15s the past two weeks, and I've been right on the brink of winning. So obviously I don't claim to be the best at this game, but the uh, there's s some serious progression going on and somebody wanted to know what are the main tips that I would give to a beginner, somebody who's just getting this game maybe, or possibly somebody who hasn't seen the progression that they'd like to move forward, and uh, the things that kind of make me a consistent player of this game. So I'm going to dive into those, and um, I don't, I don't want to get too into the weeds of it, but I'm just going to give you my main key focuses when I come into this game. And the first, it's going to root right back to the first video that I ever put, my most popular video, which is exactly how to play this game. And it's going to actually deal with completely nothing that has to do with the physical game, and it's going to be more of like how I sit. So every single time I play, I play on a, a computer monitor with my PS5, and I make sure that I'm sitting directly square to the television. That is super important because if you're sitting on some sort of angle, you're going to be pushing your stick in any sort of direction, whatever angle you're facing. The second tip that I would say when I am sitting is I like to have my elbows locked onto an armrest. So I have a computer chair here. I don't like to just let my elbows just sit freely and that's because I can move my hands and my controller in a different direction if I don't have a stationary object to put them on. So an armrest is super beneficial for me for the way that I play and obviously you don't have to play this way. These are just my suggestions of what works for me and maybe it'll work for you. So those are the two first things. Make, your shooting, make sure you're sitting square to the television and make sure that your elbows are locked onto an armrest. That works very well for me. It may not work for you, but that's my two big tips outside of the game. As for in the game, the number one tip I have talked about on a previous TGC stream. So if you haven't been checking those out, you might want to check it out. I help people on the live streams um, just talk golf if they have questions while I'm playing the game I stop what I'm doing and I'm I'm always open to just helping you guys out so the number one tip that I told them and it's the one that I focus on the most is where is the top of the backswing and because hitting a hundred percent gives you a better probability and a bigger gray bar section for hitting a perfect shot and or hitting a not a red fast or a red slow so in order to do that, you need to know where the top of the backswing is. Because if you go into the red 101s, you're only going to decrease your gray bar and your white bar and make it a lot easier to hit red fast and red slows. So you want to make sure you're not playing for the extreme 101%. So if you were looking at my golfer right now, um, right about the top of my shoulder, so like right here, is where 100% is. So... If you pull it back, you'll feel the vibration right at that point where my hands meet that, meet that part like right equal with my ear. So when I hit that point, I only stare at that point the entire time in my swing. When I hit that point is when I initiate the downswing. And I try to match my tempo so whatever speed I'm pulling back is whatever speed I like to push forward. And if you're hitting too slow, I recommend speeding up the backswing and that will also speed up your forward swing. If you're hitting too fast, I recommend slowing down the backswing, and then you'll have a slower forward swing as well. But I like to just focus on that one point. I always have markers. Every shot that I hit, I have a marker of where the 100% is, and that's something that completely takes any tension I have in my hands off of the ball, off of hitting a good shot, and I mean, I'm not perfect. I'm going to hit bad shots, but this gives me the results that I need to be a consistent player of this game. And then if I'm hitting driver, I'll just say I always play a little draw with my driver and that's because it protects me from the slow miss because it would just be a more of a block instead of like a big hooky slice. 
with my driver I always aim slightly down the right and I hit a draw. So I know this is a lot of information but I'm trying to cover it without spending 30 minutes of your guys' time with the big keys. So I'm locked in right here, I'm square to the television, my arms are locked onto the armrest. I'm looking at my golfer right on that right shoulder and all I'm going to do is as soon as I hit that spot I'm going to initiate the downswing with the same tempo that I had. A little push on the stick but not too bad that's just a little push that's all that is I mean that's easily fixable so here let's let's just fix this up a little bit there we go a little draw right into the fairway that was a 95 percenter so also if you hit a little bit lower on the 100 percent you're more likely to get a perfect meter that's just something that I found there we go and my slow is protected by hitting a straight ball so like I said I'm not gonna hit perfect shots this game with this update has made it very hard to hit perfect shots you're just trying to stay out of the red fast and the red slows and you just try to hit a gray or a perfect obviously if you can hit the perfect that's the best situation for you but I'm perfectly okay and you see that's why I play the draw right there is even when I hit the slow it's just slightly to the right and it's not a big slicer so that'd be my tip and I'll show you guys all the way down the bag I guess I don't even need to go anywhere when I'm hitting my irons we'll say I'm hitting a seven iron here we'll hit it right over I got a little bit of wind the the spot is the exact same with my irons right at my ear just about my shoulder is the same 100% spot as any of your drivers. Makes it super easy. And if you are a beginner of this game, I highly recommend the most forgiving clubs possible. If you had an opportunity to dive into the Titleist, I can go through a what's in my bag. Which I'll do, I'll do at the end of this video. I'll do a what's in my bag just in case anyone has missed it. But it's just super simple stuff here. I got a little bit of wind pushing that's why everyone's going a little bit to the right um, but all I do is just I just pay attention to that marker and that's why the the meter it's not really good for me I pay attention too much to the meter and I just need to be able to focus on my player and then we can go all the way down I know some people like the flop and the splash shots um, I go I'm gonna I go a lot more in depth in the video that I just made about the new pitch shot and how I use that ever since the most recent update but since we're here I'll just cover it quickly just like I was talking about uh, for for the where your 100% is for a full swing on the flop shot it's gonna be the buttons on my shirt so I'm paying attention to the buttons on my shirt you can see my hands touch the buttons right there and then I hit it without hitting a red fast so obviously 101% I went a smidge over like I said, I don't use it because they really reduce the, the section. Same thing with the splash shot. The buttons on your shirt is the 100 percenter. And I just pay attention to that. Obviously went a little bit under there. But I don't really pay attention to the splash. Um, of course, the phone goes off during the video. Uh... Pitch shot, just got to find out where it goes. Find the marker. Vibration here is just uh, just above my chest area. So right between my chest and my belly button. 100%. Slightly slow. And you just got a rhythm. Just get in a rhythm. Try to feel the rhythm. And that's with that. And I'll cover it with my putter as well. You guys, just bear with me for a second. I will go into... Uh, practice going to putting and I'll show you guys the markers I have for my putting for putting wise I pull it back a little bit faster because I, I if you can do it pulling it back slow because there is no penalty for that for like pushing it too fast too slow for me I had to take a thought out of it so I pulled the stick back faster to just kind of be a normal get into a normal swing we're just gonna just put a little bit straight here but I just find the vibration. So when I'm putting, 
my controller is vibrating when I hit the back foot just about like the middle of my foot to back foot so that's all I'm paying attention to here that's my marker and that's the marker that I use if I'm going to a longer putt say I have to hit this 85 putt I can't use so let's see where the vibration is the vibration is halfway up my leg so I can't find it one way I can't use my feet because that's the easiest thing to use so what I do is I pay attention to my grip and I see where my grip crosses a line and I use that as my reference point it's a huge hidden gem so like you can see where I'm gonna pull this back so you guys can see it oh no it's not gonna it's not gonna let me but essentially when I go straight again this point right here pay attention to that and when the bottom of my grip crosses it you're gonna notice so like right now pay attention to that little crosshairs when the bottom so where the blue changes to red on the shaft of my golf putter when that changes when that crosses that little diagonal is when my controller vibrates so I pay attention to that right there that's where my controller vibrates and I look I hit a white a white perfect and look where the putt goes obviously I wasn't aiming for it but distance right there simple putting distance and that's how I stay in the zones for everything that I do that's pretty much it other than that it's it's just re repetitions and just getting used to it all I'll do a quick what's in my bag it, it hasn't changed forgiveness is your friend in this game highly recommend uh, forgiveness as much as possible I got the TS3 driver and that's I mean I recommend probably the the sim if you want a little bit more forgiveness if you are struggling with the driver obviously I play in the TGC's which are pretty difficult in windy conditions so I needed a little bit extra wind I mean a little bit extra distance not wind Jesus but um, so I can deal with a little bit of the forgiveness because I've gotten used to my tempo but you guys see I go red fast with it um, that sim driver or the the equivalent Maverick which I believe is the this one right here the Maverick Max the Maverick Max or the sim are probably the best if you're okay with losing about five or eight yards and um, just hitting fairways all day long I got TSI 3 TSI 3 three wood I play the Bridgestone B JGR this was something you had to earn and unlock it just works better for the gapping but there's two really good ones which is the D7 and the TS3 highly recommend these but this just worked a lot better for my gapping so that's why I use that one I always mention the T300s absolutely stellar the SM8s silvers for the wedges are really good, but for my gapping wise, I went with the Ben Hogan's, uh, the equalizers, the silver, and that's just because gapping, and I can deal with a little bit less forgiveness on those because I'm pretty confident with them. But, and then the Ben and a putter. If you have been following my channel, you know that I used to have some squirrely putting meters, and uh, that's why I put the banana slice in because my my meters used to look like little bananas. And um, it actually has been super beneficial because it's so thin. I can see the ball the entire time, which makes me uh, be able to know where my markers are for my distance. So if you're using one of those putters that completely cover the ball, it makes it super hard for you to gauge like how far you're pulling it back. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope this helps. If this doesn't help or I'm not making sense or maybe there's something that I'm not covering here, Please just leave a comment down below. I, I respond back to pretty much all my comments and just try to give you guys as many tips as possible. Just do me a favor and smash that like button down below. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, you're going to want to be subscribing because I know we're kind of in a low period here. But eventually this game or maybe EA, I'm going to be playing them both because I have no affiliation to either. When it picks back up, we're going to uh, really be attacking it in the next season. So um, I'm going to continue TGCs this week. So... Yeah, I hope this helps. If not, thanks for watching anyways, and um, I hope you guys really have a great week. Catch you later.